Oh, you all sit down, please, please, please. This is this is embarrassing now. Okay. <laughs> oh, Deborah, thank you. You're uh, you're too kind. You're much, much too kind. That it's really an honor for me to be here today and speak to you all because this is a. I'm very passionate about this. I've seen this work, and it's very a very very simple thing. Um, I want to thank Dr. Payne for allowing me to come today and um, to speak to you all and to show you what I know about it and what I think the uh, future holds for this and how we can work and make achieve this. Um, I want to share with you today all of my enthusiasm about what I have for communities and schools. As you know, the Department of Education has gotten behind this and they're helping us do a three-year pilot program to some of the counties. Right now we're in Wyoming County, McDowell County, and then last week we launched in Berkeley County. Um, in the fall last year we went to Wyoming and McDowell County and uh, we had uh, like a little pep rally. We involved the parents, the children, uh, the, the uh, people at the school, the teachers were there, guidance counselors, just everyone that, and we wanted to kind of show them what we were all about. They came and they were really receptive. You know, a lot of people that we found in our, that uh, the parents just don't know about this. You know, the parents are a little, maybe sometimes a little bit too timid. They don't know the right channels to go through to help their children. And these are just simple things like, uh, uh, we want to try to get every child graduated in the schools and counties that we're in. That's our primary thing that we're focusing on right now. But not every child is ready to go to college, so we want them to go to uh, channel them toward technical schools or just some good employment. But we need to get them graduated from school. Um, there, we'd like to uh, say that um, that we have a lot of funding that we hope that will come up this, as we're speaking right now. There's been five million dollars that's been proposed to the communities and schools. And you may think, well gosh, that's so much money. What are we going to do? You know, but we need to, um, the funding of every school that we go into needs to have a site coordinator in that school. Uh, Deborah is like our chairman for our whole committee and she oversees everything for communities and schools. But under her and then all the schools that we're in, whether it be Wyoming um, West Side or whether it be Wyoming East, we're just in West Side right now. But we need to have a coordinator in every school, which we do right now. So to pay them, and they need to be paid because we need to, for them to be responsible. And it's, it's a very nice job, a very demanding job. We need to, um, training for the support staff for the program, we need to try to encourage the families to get involved in this. Because right now, as you know, in everything that we're doing, absenteeism from schools is just the greatest thing that we have. So some way we have to get with the parents and just get them to get on board with us and get the children to school. Um, the national communities in schools uh, are working very closely with us to tell us what direction that we need to go to. Right now, this coming year, we want to expand to 15 or 20 more schools. Um, in these schools, they'll receive like a three-year grant that we're uh, proposing, that we have in the other counties right now. Our goals in the expansion is to reduce the, the absenteeism in schools to improve the family engagement with the children and improve their college readiness, whether it be to go to college or like I just stated, to technical school or get them so that they'll have some uh, purpose in life or a job in life and for sure have increased the graduation rate. Um, we plan, as I said earlier, to have a uh, coordinator in school to, that is paid, a paid person in the school to help provide this for the students to, in tutoring, mentoring, in physical or mental health services and just their basic needs. There are some children that, you know, uh, we have to kind of go back to the simplicity of basic needs for kids. Uh, we still have the clothing, food, and shelter that's still a huge problem that we want to be there to help. And these are things that we can help with as well. Um, 
our goal is after three years for all of these schools to be financially stable on their shelves. And that's why we need to get them involved in the community so much. We need like uh, grants, we need businesses, we need people to sponsor this and get involved in it. And we have a good response right now from like our educators and also from the business communities that are really working with us and becoming involved in it. And also maybe we can get federal um, Title I funding. And so we're just looking at every resource that we can. We want to get as many people involved as we can. And it's just really a simple thing. You go to these schools and it doesn't matter whether we're in Berkeley County or if we're in Wyman County, McDowell, Greenbrier County or Raleigh County, all these kids have the same basic needs. We have the same problems. Doesn't matter if we're, we're located geographically, but we want to get in here and we just, we're just having a wonderful response and we, we want you all to be on board with us and let you know that we're genuinely trying and we're gonna make a difference in these children's lives. And we just want a good graduation grade and we want, right, and we want everyone to feel good about themselves. So again, thank you all for having me today. I really appreciate your time and that uh, you're just doing a wonderful job and uh, good luck with what you're doing from now on in the next few weeks. Thank you all. Absolutely. Miller, I should have known that now. Okay. <laughs> Any questions? Just a comment I was thinking about. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Um, just a comment I was thinking about when the first lady was speaking about the, the, invest, the investment of some $5 million. But I know the results in Greenberg County have been outstanding as far as graduation rate. And when you look downstream and you think the chance those kids have compared to they didn't graduate, mm -hmm how much less they're going to cost. So not only, in my opinion, as a financial guy, is it the right thing to mm -hmm. do, but investing some money in programs like this up front obviously pays off in improved lives, but improved lives and productive lives. So it, it may seem like a lot of money, but I guess I would argue investment at the front end should pay off at the dividend. So thank you for championing it. Uh, you've been a great champion, so thank you. Well, uh, thank you, and that's exactly right. You know, we, uh, small investments now is going to be a huge invest investment in our state, our country, and everything for these individual kids. Nancy, do you have any comments or questions? I'm sorry, what now? Yeah. Oh, he's talking to the board member. No, I really don't. Yeah. I just uh, am so appreciative of the First Lady um, promoting this. I think it's wonderful. And I, I'm really sorry I couldn't be here today. And I tried to go to the Berkeley County kickoff, the, the one that was canceled. And, <laughs> so, at one point we'll we'll get to see each other, I hope, and maybe um, visit one of these schools that are involved. Deborah, I, I just wanted to uh, let everyone know that to attend one of these sessions with first lady um, to see the children's eyes as they look at me. She's a celebrity. Oh gosh, <laughs> right. hardly. Well, to, to us you are, and to the children you are. But in, in uh, Berkeley Springs up in Martinsburg, at our last one, the uh, school system had put together a little autograph book. And to see the children line up to get autographs signed by uh, First Lady was really remarkable. And then they wandered up. I'm just sitting there. Yeah. You know. But yet, everywhere we've been, the appreciation that you see from the school people, mm -hmm. um, you know, one principal broke into tears talking to me about the opportunities uh, presented by this. To have a person embedded in the school whose only job is to make sure that children are on track, you know, that they're coming to school, that they're going to class, they're doing their homework, that mm -hmm. they need glasses, they get glasses. Mm -hmm. So all these things that we don't see are in this program. And so um, thank you for oh. bringing it to our attention. It's really making a difference. Pat, thank you, First Lady. As we talked before, you began to speak, uh, you, you have eloquently talked 
about something that's elegantly simple, communities in our schools. Absent mustering out the support of the communities, we can't be successful in anything else we do in education. So thank you very much for leading this. Well, thank you. Just curious, what are the qualifications of this person that you're embedding in the school? Are there any special qualifications for just a care in these rooms? Well, first of all, we want them to care. If you don't care, you probably shouldn't be in this position. You know, that's that's the way I think. But uh, usually we're, what we're finding are people even that are retired from the school system. We're seeing uh, teachers, I know in Green Rock County, who have graduated from school, who haven't taken a job yet, that are working in that. We're having concerned people in the community that just care about people that come in. And so many times, these children or students need to come in, they just need someone to talk to. You know, they don't have anyone to talk to. Uh, these are, you know, these people are vetted and obviously, you know, the, the best people we can find are in these positions. But first and foremost, we just want them to care about the kids and know that they're there for the right person. One, just a follow-up, do they develop a volunteer group that helps them in the school? They do. There's a lot of like, uh, without with the site coordinators, they branch out, and the, the, we have people that are tutoring. We have people within the community that are tutoring, and a lot of these are maybe even with my experience from Greenbrier County, are people that maybe their children have already graduated, and you know, kind of maybe the empty nest syndrome, but and so they are tutoring and mentoring these uh, children, but also. Uh, the students like kind of their peers. They like people that are kind of near their age, and that goes just a long way with them. So we're just, we're all over the board. We're just, uh, but we're getting good people. We want to surround ourselves with good people for the children and students to be successful and for this program to be successful. Absolutely, and if you all would just go and, and just see the different communities, and like I said, it doesn't matter where in the state we are, we have basically the same needs. Maybe in the southern part right now, we're a little bit more needy and we need a little more help, but uh, you know, these are just universal problems that schools and children face and that we want to help them with, and I can say Deborah Sullivan is instrumental in this. She's just doing a wonderful job. Vicki and Katie and Michelle Blatt is just wonderful, and Carrie. I don't know if Carrie's here or not. Dr. Payne is spearheading this, and he's just been on board with us from day one. And so we believe in this program. We believe in children. We believe in our future. So if there's any way that you all can help us, we just want to promote this and just know that we care and we're here for the right reasons. Real quick, what are the counties that are involved in this now? We have Wyoming, McDowell, and Berkeley. So we only have three in the program now. But uh, from the National Association, they're suggesting that we expand to uh, relatively uh, in the proximity of counties that we have, that we're in now, like more southern counties, just, just it's probably more cost effective to kind of go to these counties and kind of group them together. And so obviously, you know, I think the southern part of the state is very needy in some of the counties. And they're all over the state, you know, so we're just going to go with their recommendations and research and everything, and then what we feel within the state, you all will have a huge uh, pike about where that we're going because you all know the needs, you know, as well as we do or better than we do. So, you know, we want everyone's involvement to help us go to the different counties that we need. Uh, thanks, Mike. And, and you mentioned the three that we've gotten jumps on recently. Greenberg actually had the program for Years. They have. Mm -hmm. And, and um, I know you've been involved with that, and that's where we've seen the success rate. I believe in Greenbrier, it's, is it every student, just about every student that that the parents commit to and they sign up that actually, actually participates graduates, I believe. Is that just about every one? I think that's right, Tom. I think uh, uh, Greenbrier East, uh, Greenbrier West isn't involved with this, but then the other high school in the county, Greenbrier East, they had a 100% graduation rate with the students that were involved in it. So it is working, and if, if you'll just, just meet some of the students, you know, uh, it's hard to imagine, but even right now with, with students in high school and stuff, there's a housing need. Some kids really don't have a place to live, and I 
you just can't fathom that 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 is going on and it's something we need to be aware of. Which just came to mind that, that some of the meetings I've attended in Greenville County, the testimony of some of the young people that have successfully, it's just amazing. I mean, it takes us all to tears mm -hmm. when you see some of the situations some of these children are dealing with and yet uh, having a dependable individual, adult in their mm -hmm. life, which has made all the difference in the world. Not only are they graduating from high school, they're going to some of the best colleges in the country and going on to be very successful and they were lost. That's so right. Found a dependable adult. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's remarkable to see those young people I can't express how, how great it is that those young people are successful. Right, they just need to know that someone that cares about them, just some interest and time, just to take time with them, listen to them, talk to them, and just kind of guide them as best you can, and that, that goes a long way. Thank you. So I was familiar a bit with communities and schools in, in my former life, actually, before I came back this second time. And before I knew the First Lady was so interested and it actually started with Greenbrier County. I got a chance years ago to play in a golf tournament. I'll never forget, I teed off with Troy Aikman. He can golf. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he really can golf. Like 300 yards down the middle every time. <laughs> but uh, it was up at the, uh, the sneak course. And, mm -hmm. and Emily was doing a... That's right. Yes, I remember that, yes. The uh -huh. Cowboys and a couple of Redskins came in, the Huggins and a bunch of others. Mm -hmm. And it was a very successful fundraiser. When I actually had a chance to meet, meet Bill Milliken from South Carolina, the textile guy that really got this thing started. And what really excited me when I knew that, uh, Kathy, you were involved in this, and you had this strong interest in this, was the success rate and the proprietary structure of the program. There are a lot of reform things out there but no one can boast of a 100% graduation rate. And so their secret sauce, quite frankly, is, is mentoring kids. And they have a formula that can be replicated in many other places. And so that's why I'm really, really you think about what goes into it, a, a student that graduates. They have to come to school. Their grades do go up. They have to behave. All of that is wrapped into a graduation rate. And so if we can successfully uh, scale this out to other counties, this is what we really need. Yesterday, I couldn't help but to think the kids from Greenbrier County that were showing tremendous projects mm -hmm. missed this year. They, we, had a, we had some kids from a, uh, Project Lead the Way classroom. It's a pre-engineering curriculum. I wondered if there were any kids from the Communities and Schools program that were there because it's the mm -hmm. job of the person in the school, the first lady mentioned, the site coordinator, connect those kids to their ambitions and to their dreams. Mm -hmm. And so really excited to work with you on this program, our staff, Deborah, uh, and others. Because I think that, uh, and, and really hope the legislature finds it to, 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 to approve what the governor put in his budget for this, for this program so we can mm -hmm. scale it out to, to many more uh, districts. And frankly, save the lives of many, many kids. That's true. Thank you, Dr. Payne. Dr. Perry. Madam First Lady Kathy, thank you for being here, first of all. Thank you so much for having me. Let me express to you that the board believes in the program. Okay. Uh, very much so. And we very much will support any efforts that uh, Dr. Payne contributes to your program. I have one question. Uh, obviously, again, I appreciate you taking the lead on this. And Michelle went out there this. I don't know if I want to put you on the spot. They say I'll put everybody on the spot. That's all right. <laughs> That's okay. Assuming, or you don't assume anything, but the, 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 uh, the legislature approves the $5 million. How many additional programs can we expect? Well, right now we're uh, hoping to go into 15 to 20 new schools, you know, this year. So we want uh, we want to do this immediately, you know. So it's going to expand rapidly. We want to involve as many people as we can, many, as many counties. And uh, so we're going to go very rapidly, I think. So we have big plans to go to a lot of places. As we've streamed, I hope people hear that this morning out here, they hope they hear it across the way. Okay. Uh, how important it is and how significant to be the number of lives and the number of programs yes. this $5 million will facilitate. It is. So I uh, appreciate that. I know uh, yesterday we heard a pres presentation by St. Haven, and those ladies are here today. And they provide some of the wraparound services that you're concerned with in mm -hmm. terms of drugs and so forth. So maybe before you leave here, you can think 
to. I'd love to. We just all need to work together. It's going to take a lot of people doing a lot of different things. And uh, uh, if I could just interject this little thing right now, we had a meeting about a month ago, and uh, we had uh, the site coordinator from Wyoming County and McDowell County come down. And I'll just kind of use this as an example from the uh, gentleman who is the site coordinator in McDowell County. He had a very detailed uh, ledger of what he's going on, what he's doing. The, uh, the students that are seniors that are in trouble about graduating, he knew exactly what they needed, what they were lacking, how many days they had missed of school. So these people are really tracking these kids and really sincerely getting them to graduate. So, you know, it's just not a fly-by-night thing. They're actually their friend and they know what's going on. So I just, when I felt like I need to tell you all that, you know, that it's very much documented. I look forward to the number of programs that will be up start so, with this $5 million. Oh, be wonderful, wouldn't it be great? Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you all, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.